Hello everyone, this is Viewer's Choice, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borsch and we're going to look at some games played recently and not so recently, so it's gonna be a mixed bag. Alright, and let's start with this game. Agorka plays the ones. I don't know who is the person. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. I'm always happy to see this because even though there are some drawing lines in the Grunfeld, but it's always an exciting opening to play. C takes d5, knight d5, e4, or all very natural. Knight c3 takes bishop g7, knight f3, castles. Now castles, even though it's played by many players, it's not so good. In fact, it was played in a game recently in the World Cup between Aronian and Dubov. But I still feel that c5 is the best move here. Because you want to jump out with your queen as quickly as possible and put pressure on this healthy little pawn on c3. So I think this is a miss, or at least a little bit of an inaccuracy. Castles, bishop e2, that's very good. c5, bishop e3. Now bishop e3 is basically giving back, well, which one? which shouldn't have been given back. White should have just castled. And after bishop g4, white has bishop e3. Knight c6 ideas are always paired with d5, and this is a huge advantage for white. The only question would be maybe queen a5. But then again, white can play bishop e3. And queen takes c3, rook c1, and white is going to take the c5 pawn and have big compensation that he shouldn't get. So that's one of, the, one of the big reasons you need to play c5 here with queen a5. And if bishop e2, you can already attack the center, which you couldn't do if you castle. So castles, bishop e2, c5, bishop e3, queen a5. Again, it's a very standard position, queen b3. But queen b3 is very wrong. Why is queen b3 so wrong in this position? What's wrong with queen b3? It's just wasting time. Yeah, it's just wasting time. And also, it doesn't block this diagonal. Mm -hmm. So black has a very powerful move here. Just take. Yeah, just take. Just take, instead of knight c6, just take would have been very good. Because this would ruin the center for white. And actually, the only thing white had going for him is the center. So knight d4, knight c6, and I would even claim that black is slightly better in this position. So knight c6 was played, which wasn't a great idea. Castles. And now white is again in contention. Rook d8. Rook d8 I don't like. One of the reasons I have bad memories, the second thing is this f7 pawn can become a real big weakness. Rook d1, c takes d4. Knight d4, which is terrible, because you need to take with the c pawn. You're playing for these healthy center pawns, and then you can get better with white. But if you just destroy your own center, that will cost you. Knight e5. Okay, black doesn't really want to exchange stuff. f4, knight g4, bishop c1, bishop d7, h3. Well, there's no queen takes b7, because black would just take on c3 and have a pleasant position. These pieces on e2, e2 and c1 are very passive, so it's... Minimum equals for black, but it should be objectively better. h3, bishop a4. Oh, tactics. Queen a3, knight h6. But queen a3 just saved <coughs> white because there's no bishop d1. Because white just takes the queen. Queen a3, knight h6. Rook d3, b6. Okay, I like b6. Stabilizes the queen. Just defends it. 
But on the other hand, Black was doing something that he shouldn't have done. What is that thing that Black did that he shouldn't have done in this position? What did Black misplace badly? Which piece got badly misplaced in this position? Yeah, can you please your, raise your hand? Yeah? Merging H6 will do. Yeah, the knight on H6 is terrible. It's not doing anything there, and it'd rather be on anywhere on the board. There's no place it wouldn't rather be. It would rather be on A1 than on H6. It just doesn't feel well there. So bishop E3, that is why I'm not sure that white is so much worse anymore. It's roughly equal complicated. I'm not, not sure that with this knight, black can pretend to be better. Uh, bishop f8, black is being tricky. What does black want to play in this position next? E5, E5 of course. Just defending the pawn and also being tricky. Planning to play e5 if given the chance. And that, that would be a double attack as the bishop hits on the queen and the knight at the same time. But white doesn't want to blunder a piece, so plays queen b2, queen a6, which is a strange move. Because if you can, don't put your queen in a battery, because that could never turn out well. Rook d2, queen b7, but it seems black survived the scare. Bishop f3, rook c8, g4. And g4 I give high marks to because it asks the question, where is this knight headed? And I'm just going to play g5 and win a piece if you don't do something about it. So black played king g7 out of desperation, g5, knight g8, f5, and there are two colors here, but I'd rather be white. Queen c7, and the tragedy, that, the tragedy here is that f6 is impossible because of knight e6 check, and we take everything. Otherwise, black's position is pretty rough. Queen c7, knight e2. Now, that's a bit passive, right? and was uncalled for. It wasn't, there wasn't really a big need for that. C4, yeah. Another little trick by white would be a great idea because queen c4 runs into what? Yeah, just checkmate, double checkmate. You don't only mate, you double checkmate, the best. He has the knight and the queen as the Magnificent two just kills the black king on g7. And yeah, after c4, black would be in big, big trouble, near resigning. Because after queen e5, which would be natural, it again runs into something superb of knight c6, of course. And again, the Magnificent duo wins. So instead, white played knight e2, which is not a great move. Therefore, f6, finally, black could say. c4 still could work, but I don't think it's going to get played. Nope, bishop g4, which, again, not a great move. What else could we do here? Yeah, almost everything, but... We still need to find a plan, even if we're winning. You still need a plan. I believe white is winning, but still. Knight f4. Knight f4, yes. And actually, that's an important trait of a chess player. You have to admit your mistakes sometimes and go back to e6. Because, as Eric Rosen would say, that knight on e6 would be an octopus. And we love octopuses if there are ours and not our opponents. We hate, we hate enemy octopuses. Bishop g4, rook takes d2, queen takes d2. And I'm not happy anymore for white. I think we're just worse. 
Why? Because our king side is a little bit loose. And we're going to play for the, pay the price for that. Rook d8, bishop d4, bishop b5. In the last three moves by black were really sensible. Putting pressure on this e2 knight. Again, this rook is putting pressure on d4. So this is getting very, very bad suddenly for white. Rook f3, h5. I don't know, h5 I wouldn't have found. Not that it's bad, but I'm not sure it's good. g5 takes, knight takes h6. And I think I spotted why it's not so much fun. Because queen g5 might be a little bit irritating. Black still has this move of bishop e8, but who wants to play bishop e8? I don't want to play bishop e8. So I think h5 was a bit hasty. Black could just try to activate the queen somehow, bring it to c4 or something. Still feel that it's getting good for black, but h5 was a bit too much. Takes, takes, knight f4, finally, bringing the knight to e6, also hitting on g6. Rook d6, knight takes g6, but again, it turns out terrible as white realized he needs to bring his knight up. Knight takes f8, queen f7. Oh my god, what's going on? Knight e6, queen h2. Okay, so white won a piece. So after three, four moves, it, it was swinging back and forth. It was kind of close to being very good for black. Now it's totally winning for white again. Queen b7, bishop e3, good. Just keep your extra piece. Queen takes e4. Oh my god, again. Black is having lots of threats. Rook d1, queen b1. So maybe black has some sort of compensation in this position. King f2, queen b1, king g3. But this was a good plan, trying to tuck away the king. And the king feels quite safe on g3 with, uh, with the watchful eye of the e3 bishop. So rook d1, king h4, bishop c6, rook f2, rook h1, rook b2. Now, I always tell my students, if your queen is hanging, defend your queen. Don't bother attacking any other pieces. Just bring your queen to g3. That's much, much better than start starting to goose chase the other queen because that could only lead to trouble. Queen e1, queen f2, knight g4, king takes g4, queen d1, king h4, queen d3. And white is still a piece up, but I can see a lot of black pieces swarming around the white king. Queen g3, queen e4, queen g4, and rook f1. Bishop f2, rook c1. It's getting confusing. King h5, takes, takes. Yeah, black didn't want to get checkmated with queen g7, so black took, takes. Rook takes c3, bishop h4. Bishop f3, check, ow, that's nasty. Bishop e4, king g4, bishop f3, king f2, no draw. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused already who's better. I'm not sure if white is much better anymore because this bishop is a monster. It's different to an octopus, but it's still a pretty good piece. Knight d8, king g6, king g1. Yeah, white totally lost control of this game. Rook d2, f5, rook d7, rook c4, bishop f2. Okay, four. Okay, so black is eating all the pawns. King f6, c6, f4. Don't blunder. Oh, the rook. The rook is gone. And the knight will be gone. And the game is gone. All right, so white resigned. Um, okay, so let's look at this game by Rutkowski. Neidorf Memorial, let's see what's in store. A Sicilian, a Sicilian of one kind, and a Neidorf, stylish. Bishop e3, e5, 
clearly the best move here. Some people played e6 in the past, but just to name a very, very famous Hungarian player, Béla Perényi, and he invented this brilliant tactical variation of g5, g takes f5, e takes f5, d5, g takes f6 sometimes, or even queen f3, d4, long castles, knight d7. And you wouldn't guess what's one of the main moves in this position. I don't accept positional moves. I just say this up front. Bishop takes d4? So bishop takes d4 for Perény is too positional. He takes with the rook. Because he believes that domination is more important than pieces and won many, many games with his own pet line. And this was later on taken up by Judith Polgar. And she actually beat many good players, including Vishwanathan Anand. So this is a very, very bloodthirsty line, which I like pretty much. I'm sure Todd would like it too. So anyways, Wutkowski played e5 against Mr. Anonymous. Knight f3. Obviously, there's many moves here. Knight b3 is the classical one and should be better. Knight f3 is a little bit timid, and I'm not a big fan, even though I played this move myself. B5. B5 seems a little bit early. Why is B5 too early in this position? Can anybody help me with that? Well, not now. yeah, not now. Potentially there could be sacrifices, but not yet. Well, mostly the fact that this diagonal opened up. And usually white can use that with a4, knight, d5, as happened in the game. And this is kind of a nasty, nasty knight on d5, because you can't even take it. Because queen d5, and you can wave goodbye to your rook on a8. Because I'm just going to gobble that thing. So knight d7, a very, very nice classical Neidorf move. Bishop Knight takes b4. Bishop c4, though, would have been powerful. Because in general, in this position, there's only one square that matters, and that's the d5 square. Just taking a pawn for the sake of taking a pawn is not a great idea. And Rutkowski shows that and immediately reinforces his pressure on the d5 square. Now already, black is outpowering white on the d5 square. If I would go back, I could take, take, and maybe in the near future, castle, play f5, f4. And black has very nice counterplay for the sacrificed pawn. So all in all, I think Mr. NN should have played bishop c4. And for one thing, put pressure on d5, and maybe hinting on f7 a little bit. So knight b4 was played, bishop b7, bishop c4. I think a move too late. Bishop takes e4, because white, white loses this important e4 pawn, which is usually not a good sign in the Neidorf variation. Castle, queen c8, just taking away the square from white, queen e2 a5, knight a2, bishop e7. And already I think black is clearly better. He has the center, he has the center, he has all the control on the important squares. So this is like slight minus plus for black. Knight c3, bishop b7, rook d1, castle, knight d5. And now white is helplessly trying to get control over the d5 square, but it's not going to work. Knight f6, and already Wutkowski is booting out that d5 bishop. Bishop b3, h6. Now it wouldn't change a thing if white would take on b7. Queen takes b7, 
because in the near future I'll be able to play d5. And if you're desperately clinging to that square, I can go rook b8 and put pressure on the b2 pawn. Yeah. So this is very pleasant for black. Knight d5, bishop b3, h6. I like this h6 move. Why is the h6 move such a great move in this situation? Yeah, it just stops bishop g5 and also helps this knight to be stable and you will have an eternal control of the d5 square. And that's what matters in these kind of positions. Queen d2, queen f5. Well, queen f5 is fine, but black could even go queen g4. And that's almost deadly. Because after queen e2, I can think about exchanging, but OK, I don't want to give away my beautiful b7 bishop. But already after like rook c8, White has trouble moving around with, with his pieces. So queen f5 was played, knight e1, d5. Those tanks start rolling, and then it's going to get much worse. Queen d3, queen h5, h3, bishop a6, c4. Uh, I don't like c4. Because if you have a worse position, at least try to stay, stay a little bit passive. So you can maybe defend, but oh, I just missed this. Yeah, d4 just wins, so that's not good. All right, so c4 has to be played, which is a bad sign. d takes, bishop, bishop takes c4, rook d8, and that loses a piece. So it's going to be over very soon. Takes, takes. Yeah? yeah that, what you're saying? Oh, OK. He can move to c2, right? He can move to c2, but then. I take on d1, take again, bishop takes c4, takes, and the sneaky queen on h5 takes the d1 rook. So ha he has to take some material. Yeah, I'd rather sacrifice just like white did. Yeah. I mean, I, I would rather sacrifice my queen than just to give away a free piece. Because if I sacrifice my queen, I might build a fortress if I'm very, very lucky. But if I just give away a free piece, there's no guarantees I can survive that game. So in this way, White was doing the right thing, but I'm still not happy. Positionally, I'm cringing while I see a4, c4 together. So rook d8 takes, takes, bishop takes a6. But still, this is the best practical chance, and that's true. Knight d5, bishop c5, knight f4, king f1, rook c1, b4. Well, when you're aiming for fortresses, you're not supposed to start exchanging and changing the structure in general. Try to stay put and hope for the best. That's what you can do when you're a queen down for some material, like a rook and piece. b4 takes, knight takes h3. Oh, and the tactical ploy. Bishop e2. Well, if takes, I assume black wants king g1, queen g4 check, and he's just going to take the b4 bishop. Now, if you wonder if the knight can block, well, it can, but then I check you again, and I will even take your rook, because it's left undefended. King e2 is the same deal as king g1. I play queen g4, and I take you again on b4. Bishop e2, queen h4, another double attack. And this is just too much. Black is slowly winning the game as he takes everything. Queen d1, bishop f1, bishop h2, queen takes c4. And after queen b5, White resigned. All right. So let's look at one of Ben Simon's own game, which I can hear someone nodding heavily in the background. It is the Holiday Bash, but it was actually played in St. Louis, so that's wrong. 
Let's flip the board so we can have a good view of this game. E4, E5. So Ben Simon played Humphreys. And this is a Spanish. Actually, a very rare Spanish. Bishop C5. I've rarely seen this move. I've seen Bishop C5 immediately. But the idea of C3, F5 and with wild complications. This is actually known to be the favorite of Hector Johnny. And he had pretty good results with this with black. It's not that great, but it's playable. Okay, a6, bishop a4, bishop c5. This move is pretty rare. Castles, knight f6. Now we transpose back to the classical Arkhangelsk lines, but this could have been an original position if black plays, if black plays d6. And bishop d7. Oh, not there. d7. So knight f6, d3. d3. Actually, I'm wondering if white can take on c6. d takes and knight takes e5. That's quite possible as after knight e4, queen e2, Maybe queen d5. Hmm. Actually, this holds, still holds. But oftentimes, um, elite players in, play in this move order, playing b5 first, bishop b3, and bishop c5. And I guess that's one of the reasons they do this move order that they're not that sure of. This bishop takes c6. So d3. D6, H3, Bishop D7. Now Bishop D7 is a very nice developing move, but can anybody help me to find an even stronger move in this position? Knight D4? Knight D4 is not quite possible because you're pinned, so you can't do that. Uh, B5. B5, yeah, and if I play Bishop B3? H6. Yeah, I'm going to be scared. Knight A4, probably. Yeah, Knight A5. Uh, yeah. yeah, H6 could be interesting, and it's very typical just to take away this square. But Knight A5 is even stronger, as it has this brutal threat of taking away White's bishop, therefore getting the bishop pair advantage, which usually gives you a slight advantage if you play black. But bishop d7 is a normal move. Knight c3, knight d4. Notice that this b5, knight a5 plan is still valid for a long time. Until white plays c3, this knight a5 idea is possible. Because if I play b5 now, I can post my bishop to c2. Or if I'm cheeky, I can play bishop b3. And after knight a5, bishop c2. Or if I even want to punish you, I can take, take, and b4, fork. But after knight c3, b5 is still possible. But knight d4 is a very clean move, getting rid of all these nasty pieces, this a4 bishop and this knight on f3. And usually this should equalize. Takes, takes, bishop g5, h6, provoking. Successful provocation, g takes f6, knight d5, castles. Actually, I really like this pawn sacrifice because the side black is trying to play on is the king side. So he is trying to checkmate there. And if you take some pawns in front of your own king, I say thank you. Thank you for your donation. Knight d5, rook g8. And rook g8 is very good, just lining up lining on the G line, hitting on the G2 pawn, and threatening this little idea of queen takes H3. So king H2, F5. And this looks very nice with black. Even if your computer would cry in this position that you're a pawn down, you're a pawn down, what's wrong with you? Turn off your computer, use your brain. 
you're the only one attacking in this position. So black must be better or at least have a decent amount of compensation in this position. Knight d4, bishop d4. Knight d4 is a good move. Whenever you're defending it, but you're a pawn up, try to exchange off some pieces because that will make your life somewhat easier. Bishop d4, c3, bishop a7. Queen b3, setting, setting up a little trick because... If, let's say, I take on e4 too early, how can we punish that? Knight b6, Knight b6 of course, and that would be a sad day for black. Because white would just take this queen and have a good afternoon. But black sees that and plays king b8, queen d1. Now, this doesn't make, make any sense at all. So queen b3 is fine. It's a good little trick, connecting the two rooks, but going back just doesn't make any sense. What would you play instead? I would rather play something along the lines of queen e2. Trying to defend the g2 pawn after, let's say, queen g6, f3. Now this looks very ugly for white, but I'm not losing yet, and that makes me feel relatively happy. So after check, there's this move. And because of this queen being here, I can still kind of defend that h2 square, which will be pivotal if black goes rook g5 and attempts sacrifices. I'd still say, obviously, rook g5 doesn't work right now because the knight e7 knight takes f5. So to give you a better idea, Instead of check, maybe rook g7 would be better. Just defending against this knight jump. And the plan is just the simple doubling, actually tripling of the rooks and the queen. And this should be a brilliant position for black. So queen b3, king b8, queen d1, queen g6. That's very good. Hitting, uh, hitting the g2 spot immediately, g3, and now pow, bishop takes f2. Because there's no rook takes f2, this queen takes g3, just wins the rook, and wins the game. So Humphreys rejected that, played queen f3, bishop takes g3. I like the decision of taking with the bishop, as queen takes g3 could end up in a boring winning position with an extra pawn, but it will take some time to win. But if we keep our queen and keep on attacking, it will be a much shorter struggle. King h1, queen g5. And queen takes f5 was a big mistake as queen d2 wraps it all up. As this threat of queen h2 is hard to defend. And that's how Ben Simon won this game. Thank you so much. This was viewers lecture.